join us as we stand firm until the end. We got to keep our mind on the spiritual things, brothers and sisters. We got to keep our mind on the kingdom. I mean, it's not a suggestion that we renew our thinking. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. It's necessary. It's essential that we transform our thinking. I'm talking about change the patterns of your thoughts, literally. I'm talking about changing the thought pattern. Changing the initial response to what we, would, what we used to react to, we don't react that way anymore. The first thing that comes to my mind isn't a profanity anymore. I'm more peaceful. And God's changing us. He's changing us. So let him change you. Let him change you. Listen, you've got to work with grace. You can't just resist. You can't keep putting on Tupac. Right, Zach? <laughs> you can't keep putting on Tupac and smoking a blunt and think you're going to be transformed. You can't do it. You got to you got to start letting go. Start letting go. You got to start letting go and sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it doesn't feel good. Sometimes we don't want to. Woo! Sometimes we don't want to let go. Sometimes we are holding on with a grip. Sometimes Jesus is trying to take it and we're holding, we're pulling back. I mean, come on. How are we going to change if we're holding on to it? Man, we got a lot to learn, don't we? We got we to gotta be willing to let go of some things. We got to be willing to put it aside. We got to be willing to just turn it over, put it down, whatever it may be, whatever it may be. Some, for some of you, it's video games, right? For some of you, it's television. Uh, for some of us, it's procrastination. For some of us, it's it's popping pills. For some of us, it's drinking too much. For some of us, it's hanging around the wrong, gossipy, lost people. Sometimes we got to let them go. We got to let those people go. Got to get rid of them. And it's not that we don't love them, but we've got to follow Jesus. We got to love Jesus more. We can't love them more. And like, we don't want them to perish. I don't want them to go to hell. I don't want them to go to hell. I actually still, once in a while, pray for the people I used to do drugs with. Some of the people I used to to hang with. I mean, every once in a while, not very often though, but sometimes I'll just get a group of them in my head and I'll start, Lord, is there any way to save that person? And, and I, you got to cut them loose, brothers and sisters. Listen, you, it might be hard to transition, to transition, to transition from where you're at today to where you want to be. It's a rocky road. It's a tough valley. It's a dark wilderness sometimes, but you got to do it anyway. You got to do it anyway. And look, he's opening up doors for, for you. He's putting people in your life. He's leading you to, to, uh, to chat rooms and, and to, to new music. I found some new music today. He's leading us, brothers and sisters. He's leading us. Now, how dare us, after we leave this chat room today, how dare us, after we've heard all this preaching and all these teachings and all this word, how dare us after we fellowshiped like this that we go back out and do the same thing we were doing before we came in if it was wrong? How dare us go right back out and just repeat the same thing that we were just repenting from about an hour and a half ago that we raised our hands and we turned from and we put it down at the cross? How dare us if we pick it back up? Don't pick it back up, brothers. Don't pick it back up. You've already let it go. Now let's stay on this path. Let's continue. Continue. Let's continue down this path that he has put us on today. Listen, sometimes coming to the group room is just a matter of putting our foot back on the narrow path. That's all we're really doing essentially sometimes when we come to fellowship like this. We're just putting our feet back on the narrow path. My foot got a little off to the left this week. My foot stepped a little off to the right. And this group brings you back. Come on back to the middle. Come on back to the narrow path, brothers and sisters. We'll help keep you focused. We're going to keep you in line. Keep you in line, right? But you got to do your part when we're not around. Sometimes the, the real test of our faith, the real test of holiness, the real test of obedience is when no one's looking. 
When no one's looking, ain't that right, Kelly? Ain't that right, Abby? Ain't that right, Zach? Ain't that right, Brother Lion? Ain't that right? When no one's looking, when no one's looking, <laughs> Brother Kai, you guys, hey, I'm not the only one. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. That's when nobody's looking. When nobody's looking. That's when God is still watching. God is looking. And I'm telling you right now, you better hope and pray you get convicted. Hope and pray that you get convicted. Hope and pray that, that you're not just being fake and religious in this chat room or on, on the, the church connection or where, whatever small group you're part of. Hope and pray it's not just a social activity that you're partaking in, that you really, really are connected with the living God, that you really, really are seeking to follow him, to have him, to be obedient, to be part of the kingdom, that you really want that, that you're really trying, really born of him. And it's not just some psychological relationship that you have. You want it to be real. You don't want it to be emotional and social or psychological or make-believe or imaginary. You want a real, the real deal. You want the real Jesus living right in here. And everywhere you go, whether you're with the brothers or you're alone, you have him. And he is guiding us. He's guiding us whether we're with our brothers and sisters or whether we're alone. And we got to take that step and understand this and be real with him because we're about to close this chat room. Who do you have in your life that's accountable? Who do you have in your life that's getting in your business? Oh, I don't see. I used to not like that. I used to not want people in my business. I was a closet Christian. I was a lukewarm Christian. I was a uh, backslidden Christian. And I would go to church on the weekends just enough to make my appearance, just enough to feel good in my own righteousness. Oh, I went to church this week. I went to church this week. I go to church on the weekend. But I would never let anybody into my life. I never let anybody into my private world because I didn't want them to tell me what to do. I didn't want them to control my life. I didn't like it. I was prideful and self-willed and self-centered. And quite frankly, I was lost. I was carnal. And I thought I was going to heaven. I thought I was, I thought just because I said I believed in Jesus, I thought just because I knew he came in the flesh, I thought because I had that intellectual knowledge, that, that book smart knowledge, that academic knowledge, I thought that I was okay. A little did I know that if I would have died in that dead spiritual condition, that I would have perished. Little did I know that it's not about academic knowledge. It's not about book smart. It's not about learning these things in your mind. It's about being, what we say earlier? Transformed by grace. I'm going to keep drilling this because if you're not transformed, if you don't see Christ in you, you probably don't have him. If you don't see Jesus in your life, you probably don't have him. Should I say it again? If you don't see Jesus in your life, then you don't have him. This, this is a sobering thought because if you don't see him working in your life, drawing you to repent, drawing you to holiness, turning you away from those people, places, and things that you're doing. If he's not impacting your life, then you don't have him and you're failing at grace. It all comes back to the, how are we saved by grace? Aren't you glad we have a group that we actually teach you how to be saved by grace and we don't just pin a button on your shirt and say, there you go. Aren't you glad that you, you got some, some more understanding on what it takes to be saved rather than just people saying, patting you on the back, oh, you're okay, don't worry. Come on, brothers and sisters. This is real. This is it. This is what it's all about. This is the real deal we're talking about. We're talking about the real Jesus, the real spirit, the real gospel, and a real connection, a real relationship, a life-changing, powerful gospel message that changes you. And I didn't say that I'm perfect yet. Again, I didn't say that I'm perfect yet. I said I'm changed by Jesus and he's perfecting me by faith. He's changing me over time. He's working his power in me. I see him. I see him. I see him. I see him in my life. Now, I'm not perfect yet. I want to keep drilling that and emphasizing that I'm not perfect yet. But if you are saved by grace, you will see grace changing you. And this is really important. Really important. 
And it's not about just coming, and I appreciate people confessing their sins. It's really, we've created an environment in this group where people can come up and say, yeah, I've cussed, I've masturbated, I, I smoked, and, 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 and be honest. And that is a beautiful thing. But there's a point where, there's a point where, if it's becoming comfortable for you to do that, if it's just standard quo, normal operating procedure, yeah, I committed adultery again. <laughs> yeah, I'm not perfect. I, I stole again. And <laughs> yeah, I, you know, when it gets to that point, when you're, it's just casual, casual, you know, listen. We want to be honest, and we and I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I've been that way. I kind of can get that way if I'm not careful. You know, at least I'm confessing my sins and then go right back and do the same thing. Well, I'm confessing my sins, but, you know, at least I'm confessing. I'm not, I'm not, everybody needs to judge themselves. I'm not pointing the finger and throwing stones. I want the Lord to convict you. I want you to, to examine your own heart and judge yourself. We need to judge ourselves, brothers and sisters. That's one of the things we really need to do is see clearly. Am I fooling myself? Am I deceiving myself? Or am I really, really trying to abide in Christ? Am I trying to abide in Christ or am I just fooling myself? Man, I tell you what. So, so many people are going to be going to hell who thought they were saved. Who thought they were saved. And they were fooling themselves. They were fooling themselves. And that is a very scary thing, brothers and sisters, to think that all this time I thought I had it right. All this time I thought I had it right. And, and to not have it right and to, and to stand before God and feel that terror come over you when you realize that you were wrong and you did not have it right. Wow. 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 Praise God for his truth. Praise God for you guys listening to him. Praise God for his grace and mercy. Listen, we're going to close the room out. We're going to pray the room closed here in a minute. And um, we're going to be fasting a lot coming up. And um, I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of my fasting, but I'm kind of at the brink right now. If I don't fast, I'm going to get into big time trouble. I've already procrastinated my sin for the last month. It's just been procrastination. Uh, putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And now I'm finally at the point the Lord has, has told me if I don't fast, I'm going to be suffering some losses here. And I can't afford that. I can't afford to lose the uh, trip. I'm going to California, Lord willing, on the 1st of, of uh, J June. That's in 10 days. I'm going back out there to re repeat the uh, street preaching trip. So if you're in any of the big cities that I'm going to be in, please let me know. Uh, we're going to be in... Um, Lord willing, we're going to be in Reno, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego, Las Vegas, and Dallas. So if you're in any of those five cities, and you can make it to those cities, drive to those cities, let's get together and let's preach. Last summer, I was a big hypocrite, and I feel so guilty. I was, I was really, really bad. The Lord spared me. He chastised me real good. He tore my hind end up, and I was, I was spiritually uh, beat with the rod of correction, no doubt about it. But he restored me and he's given me another chance to go do it again. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. He hasn't just like really just hardened my heart and, and just, man, the mer guys, the mercy of God is such a beautiful treasure. Please don't squander it. You never know when he's going to say that's enough. That's enough. I, I gave you enough chances and that's enough. I'm taking your life right now like he did my brother. He does do that, brothers and sisters. He will take your life and he will come as a thief in the night. He's the one that said he comes like a thief in the night. I didn't call him that. He calls himself that. He says, I will come like a thief in the night. Like a thief. He'll come and take your soul and your life right out from underneath you and you will ha not have another chance. But praise God, today we do. Today we repented. Today we've confessed. Today we fellowshiped and we prayed together. And pff, I want you guys to fast with me. Do your own kind of fasting, but this week we're going to be fasting. I'm going to be fasting a lot. You're welcome to join me. Text me if you want to join. You got my cell phone number, 843. I'm going to type in my text, my number here, 843-224-5750. And just text me and we'll set up a time to, to fast together. Uh, I'm going to be doing it quite a bit for the next 10 days. So let's, let's just leave it at that. Um, so let's pray the room closed. You're welcome to join me in fasting. Thank you for your fellowship, brothers and sisters. I love each and every one of you. Uh, may you continue to follow and obey the Lord throughout this week. And may you continue to grow stronger in grace and obedience and in the mind of Christ. 
pleasing our Lord and Father. Let's pray together. You ready? Thank you, Lord, again for showing up in a mighty way, Lord. We can't do this without you. We feel your presence. We see you in the words. We see you in the uh, the relationships that we have, Lord God, through your teachings. You're just amazing. What a loving miracle working God. Lord, we pray for the people who are seeking you that came in here, who who are struggling to find you, who um, are, are, are lost and confused. Lord God, bring them back. Uh, I pray they connect with me or someone in the group that they continue to search because you're calling them. You're leading them right now. You're, you're the one and your grace is the one that's drawing them in. So I pray they continue on this path. I pray they repent from their sins. They turn away from wickedness. They connect with somebody. They start growing and building up in the spirit. They start letting go of the world. Build them up, Lord Jesus, in obedience, in the grace. And we pray for uh, people that are suffering in the flesh and addictions and suffering and struggling with uh, bad choices. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to convict them and to draw them to their knees, whatever it takes, Lord God. Maybe bring the pain, bring the fear, whatever it takes, but keep us on our knees so that we will not fall away and have our, our, our hearts hardened. We pray for people who are physically hurting like... Um, Sister Vanessa, that you will heal her body, Lord, and, and perhaps this is a, you know something you're teaching her over the years. May she learn whatever this is and deal with these things in a godly way and strive for obedience no matter what. But we ask if it's possible to heal her body so that she can serve you in a, in a stronger capacity. And I pray that she's fulfilled in her walk with you and everyone... Uh, like her that's suffering in the flesh, who's struggling. Brothers and sisters, let's give God all the praise and all the glory until we meet again. Shine for him out into the world because we're witnesses of the almighty God and he lives in us. Don't let him down, but let's please him with our lives. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come join us as we hold on until the end. <laughs>